Hey there, Gary Hoover here with another book for review for you today. You know that I believe in reference books, dictionaries, thesauruses, encyclopedias, but more than that, data books, books full of information, either in text or in numbers, books that come out with some frequency, usually annually. There's a whole set of them that I talked about in my book um, that I keep near me uh, uh, all the time that I'm always using. And one of those books, the new edition just came out in the fall of 2011, is the Almanac of American Politics. Now, before you say, I'm not interested in politics, uh, this is the single best guide to America and the American people that exist. Anybody building a restaurant chain, a retail chain, trying to sell in different markets, trying to understand local culture, this is the book. Now, that sounds a little weird. So let's talk about what is the book. It's called The Almanac of American Politics. It comes out every two years. It's a 2012 edition for the 2012 elections, but it comes out in the fall of the previous year. I have bought this book every year since I started publishing it, 1972. So it would have come out in late 71. I was 20 years old, and that would have been 72. It would have been the first election I voted in. And it does have relevance to politics, too. It's uh, gone from $4.95 to $85. Uh, maybe you can get it cheaper at your bookseller. It is has um, uh, been through several publishers. Now it's with the great University of Chicago Press. Uh, it's had several editors, but one guy, Michael Barone, has been at it since the beginning. And uh, it's just such an amazing book. So let me tell you about it. First of all, I'll give you some of the quotes of what other people say about it. Jim Lehrer of PBS NewsHour says, the single best reference there is for Congress in Washington specifically and the country generally. And I'll come back to that. Economist Magazine said superb and so balanced that it's used by both sides of the political divide. Chuck Todd of NBC News, real political junkies get two almanacs, one for home and one for the office. Foreign Affairs Magazine says it's the most comprehensive and accurate guide to the labyrinth of U.S. politics ever assembled. Washington Post says it's indispensable. Judy Woodruff of PBS says it's the oxygen of the political world. We have the most dog-eared copy in town. And I'm sure you, anybody who is serious about politics and understanding it, has this book. So what is it? And why is it more than just politics? Well, first of all, 1,800 pages, and what it has is for every governor, every senator, and every member of the U.S. Congress. It has a picture of them. It has a little short biography. It tells uh, how they voted on a lot of key issues and how they rank as far as being liberal or conservative, and it's a very unbiased book. They're just looking at the facts. They'll say, well, you know, this person is among the most liberal in Congress, and the people like them really like them, but even their enemies agree they're hardworking and they've submitted more bills than any member of Congress. Or they'll say, well, this person really hadn't done much. No matter which side they're on, it has data on how, who they beat and how, what kind of share of the election they got as they became elected to their position. Most importantly, it has how they're rated by different groups, from far left to far right, so you can look at all that and how they voted on some key issues. And then it has text describing the place. So like, let's say you want to understand North St. Louis and its suburbs, because it's organized by congressional district. To understand the U.S., I'd rather have it organized by metropolitan area or city, but there's no book that does that. There used to be years ago, and I've got them in my library downstairs, but they're really, I mean, as far as a real guide to America, you can get travel guides that tell you which hotels to go to and which restaurants, but to really understand the people and the culture and the dynamics, are they hiring people, are they laying off people? So I just picked one here at random. Uh, North St. Louis suburbs is the first district of Missouri, congressional district. For a century or more, St. Louis seemed the center of America. The starting point for the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1804, the Dred Scott case, 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, da 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 da, 630-foot gateway arch. Um, and then it's still one of the nation's 20 largest metro areas, but today it does not occupy a central place in the national consciousness, and the central city itself has largely emptied out. The German order made so many people, da, 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 they talk about its German heritage, they talk about New Bush Stadium, um, and they talk about the people, and there's data here, too. There's, like, on the district, what's the population? That district, let me flip back here, uh, 587,000 people, down 5.6% over the last 10 years, 99.2% urban, average age of 36, 13% uh, are people over 65, 25% are under 18, 
Uh, 84% are high school grads, 25% have a college degree, very key understanding the education level of an area. 38% uh, white, 55% black, 2.4% Hispanic, 2.5% Asian, 13% of German heritage, 13% uh, work for the government, 84% work in private enterprise, which 4% are self-employed, blue collar, white collar, khaki collar, that's a new one, I gotta look that up, military? And 10% of the population are military veterans. Average income, $41,000. Medium household um, home value, $120,000. Thing is, okay, the numbers are there, but it's the text. Because you're going into a new city, and you're trying to, what's the history? Where does it come from? You want a quick read on a place, a profile of the place. Read this book. It is so cool, and I couldn't do without it. At the same time, if you are interested in politics, man, I tell you, I was reading about a guy named Bill Clinton. You know, when he came along, they said, oh, who's heard of Bill Clinton, some governor, some smaller state, whatever. I have been reading about him every two years for years in this book, about the innovative things he was doing in Arkansas government and how he, he, his whole style and how he got elected and what people thought of him. And time he ran for president, he was like an old friend. I mean, I, I knew all about the guy. So far ahead of things. So if you want to understand whether it's Michelle Bachman or Rick Perry or Barack Obama, you have to use the older edition to study his record in the uh, Senate and to study him and how he got elected. Uh, this is just such a wealth of information. So I guess the bottom line is you're crazy if you don't get this book. Get this book! Have I made myself clear? I hope so. Take care. I'll see you later.